The 100th major launch by the Indian Space Research Organization is a, a day of huge celebration. There was a successful launch which took place today. Uh, the satellite being placed in perfect orbit as well. This is the GSLV rocket. We've got images over there on your screen of the liftoff. It was an immaculate mission uh, and one which uh, certainly gives uh, ISRO a great deal of confidence. The GSLV rocket is now uh, increasingly reliable and it is the bedrock of many larger rockets which are coming up. Uh, my colleague Pallav Bagla with me in the studio. We've got a very special guest with us, uh, Dr. Undi Krishnan Nair, Director of the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center with us. Um, congratulations, sir. You've been very closely involved with this particular mission. We'll talk about the mission in a moment, but let's talk about the landmark first. 100, um, 100 launches, significant launches. I'm not talking about sounding rocket. 100 significant or major launches by ISRO. Um, where does that take us or where does that place us as a space power? Thank you for the compliment. Uh, you know, our space program, we started in early 60s. Uh, we also know the space uh, broke with the space age, started in 57 with the launch of Sputnik. But initially, in 60s, we have been concentrating on sounding rockets. So you send rockets to, say, 150, 200 kilometers, collect atmospheric data, and then uh, that is used for weather prediction and so on. The 70s onwards, we started working on uh, uh, satellite launch vehicle, which is a different class, where the satellite has to be taken to altitude, and it has to be given required velocity to stay in that orbit. Then only it becomes a satellite. So uh, baby steps were with the SLV, where we could take something like 40 kg to uh, lower the orbit. Then it was re later augmented by uh, ASLV. That means adding further boosting power to SLV by adding two straw ports. But then they were not, you know, uh, major big rockets. But the big rocket business we started with the BSLV, which was a quantum jump, a wanted class satellite, and that too for remote sensing and multiple applications. But then later, uh, you know, PSLV uses solid and liquid, uh, that is f storable propellant. But then we need a more efficient propulsion, cryogenic propulsion. That is how we started working on GSLV. And GSLV, the upper stage, uses cryogenic propulsion. Usually, most efficient stage will be at the top because that has to travel farther. And after that, with the experience that we gained from GSLV, we started working on totally indigenous cryo stage for our LVM3. And that is where we are with respect to the type of capability. We have the largest capability with LVM3, which can take 10 tons, 10,000 kg to lower the orbit. Right. And the same LVM3 we are going to use for the Indian mission. So it's a journey, but then quite remarkable for, for our Indian context. We have a, a now a very a series of PSLV, GSLV, LV and 3 and SSLV class of vehicles to meet uh, different payload uh, I mean masses. Pallav? Oh, it's, it's a remarkable journey. See, what started off when India was carrying the rockets on a bicycle and a bullock cart <laughs> to now sending humans, getting ready to send humans to space is a remarkable journey. But it has taken 46 years for this 100th launch. While a landmark, but ye dil mange more. Absolutely. In times to come, we need to do the next 100 in, in a far shorter time. And today, the chairman of ISRO, Dr. V. Narayanan, announced that in less than five years, they should hit the double century. But yes, we are doing very well. It's a national program. It meets the national goals. It cannot compare with SpaceX, which is a commercial program. So India has done extremely well in rocketry and done well despite having sanctions, technology denial, and all kind of restrictions. Remember, the, the cryogenic engine was denied to India. And it is uh, scientists like Dr. V. Narayanan and Dr. Unikrishnan Nair, who toiled for 20 years to give us a cryogenic engine. And today's launch carried an Swadeshi cryogenic engine into space and launched the Navik satellite. A great moment for India. In fact, Dr. Nair, that's my next question. What has this particular mission achieved? 
Okay, this is apart from uh, 70th launch of GSLV, which is again uh, the eighth operational launch with the uh, Indian cryogenic stage. It has launched the uh, NVS-02 satellite into its uh, precise orbit, which is a geosynchronous orbit, uh, which is, you know, that is the type of constellation we use for our Navi. And uh, it has achieved it perfectly. So that is that way adding one more satellite to the constellation. So this NAVIC is an Indian regional uh, position, navigation and timing uh, constellation, which will def definitely enhance the accuracy and the reliability of PNT services in and around India. And uh, Dr. Nair, I believe, I mean, I know that this is just the stepping stone of larger rockets. We've got a, a next generation launch vehicle as well. How significant is that project and where do we stand with that? See, so the next generation uh, launch vehicle, which right now it is named as NGLV, the government has given approval for that, which is uh, compared to uh, LVM3, it's a, a monstrous in size, more than 90 meters tall, and uh, it is using uh, more greener propulsion, which can take uh, 30 tons, 30,000 kilograms to lower Earth orbit. So that uh, rocket development has been initiated in ISRO. So it's going to be to meet our future requirements and by having multiple launches of NGLV, uh, we can take uh, uh, higher payloads to further place, including moon. Let's talk, Pallav, a little bit about the NGLV, uh, our space uh, station, which India is developing, and ultimately a mission to the moon uh, would, ride, would, would piggyback, piggyback on the NGLV, essentially, right? Oh, essentially, see, we need... a heavier lift launch vehicle. We've reached the capacity with the launch vehicle Mark III. It's a remarkable vehicle, uh, launch vehicle Mark III. 100% success record. Uh, very nice. But we need a heavier lift rocket, and the NGLV fits that bill, and the government has just cleared the project, and uh, ISRO will be making that. And like Dr. Nair was saying, uh, India would be using... Uh, methane and liquid oxygen as fuel and also using the cryogenic upper stage. And that is the vehicle which will be used for making India's space station called the Bharatiya Antrik Station for which Prime Minister wants it to be done by 2035 and then to land an Indian on the moon by 2040. And all of that would be done by the next generation launch vehicle. And the third launch pad which will accommodate the NGLV has also been cleared by the government. So the roadmap for ISRO till 2040 has been laid and the budget approval for that also has been given by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. So the roadmap and the money are all available. Rest, now it depends on Dr. Unni Krishnan Nair and his team to deliver. Dr. Nair, let's talk about the, the one mission which all of us have uh, our eyes squarely on, the Gaganyaan mission. Uh, there are lots of critical technologies which are being developed, not least of all um, the capsule itself and uh, the habitability of the capsule. It has to be human certified. Um, that's technology which is difficult to acquire. Even if it does come, it's very, very expensive. I believe we are developing it ourselves. What progress have we made? Before answering that, I would like to make a uh, small clarification with respect to what Mr. Palal Bagala was saying. For the space station, where the other station, our target is completion by something like 2035. So we are going to depend upon LVM3 and its variants for building the space station. NGLV, uh, it takes uh, some time uh, to develop it. So that clarification I would like to make. Secondly, on the human space flight, when we started, we were having, we were knowing nothing about human space flight. So that is how we started, and then we started working on small projects like life support system, or flight suit, or developing probe module, or even the parachute system and its space qualification, developing the thermal protection system needed to protect the capsule. And even on the human rating, we started afresh. What is human rating? Of course, we have only literature data available, but there also only limited information is available. So we know our will. So we started right working right from uh, the uh, solid booster, 100 ton cryo stage, 
and looked at uh, what are the areas where we need to strengthen in terms of mechanical or even types of instrumentation and so on. So that is how we evolved our own process of human writing and then made a metrics of testing we need to do to ensure that the human writing, whatever standards we are stipulated, we are meeting that. And we have successfully completed all the tests or all the propulsion systems and we are, you know, that phase we have completed. Second part is the crew escape system, which is again a vital uh, system for a manned mission where we depend upon a high reliability crew escape system to ensure the, uh, res uh, to rescue the crew uh, rather than making a very large complex, complex launch vehicle more and more high reliable. We can always have a simplified escape system and that can have an order of higher reliability. Right. So that escape system also we have developed and we have in fact done test, multiple ground tests and even one uh, in-flight test using the test work where at a critical Mach number, that is at the transonic, where the, the, the speed of the vehicle uh, changes from uh, subsonic to supersonic, which according to you know, the aerodynamic regime, it is a very critical phase. So we have demonstrated its performance and we have a couple of more tests to be done at other conditions to again ensure that the escape system is working uh, perfectly. So that technology also is nearing its completion. Then the next is the crew module and the service module together we call as the orbital module which is getting injected like a satellite by the human radar LVM3. There, uh, the, right now, we are gearing up for the G1 mission, which is an approved mission, for which uh, the vehicle stages, all the human rated stages have reached SHAR. The escape system major sub-assemblies have reached SHAR and we started the integration. And the orbital module is being uh, in the final stage of integration at VSC and URC. Once it is integrated, tested, that will move to SHAR and then we will have the first uncrewed mission. Sure. So the human rated LVM3 is totally a different vehicle. You can see the configuration is different. It's a new vehicle. And sir, I must ask you the other uh, big mission, of course, is the next Chandrayaan mission. Uh, how would that be fundamentally different? I believe one of the, the key aspects in that mission would be uh, our ability to, uh, or to robotically uh, pick up a piece of uh, moon rock and perhaps transfer it back to India. And we've actually, uh, at the moment, been testing robotics in space as well. Uh, how do these technologies all come together uh, for the next Chandrayaan mission? In our uh, last PSLV C60, which was launched on December 30, we have uh, tested two types of robotic arms in space in the POEM, that is PSLV Orbiting Experimental Module. Oh, one is an inching type, a verb type moving, and another one is a typical uh, one night fixed uh, robotic arm. So these are all uh, two experiments we have done. Now, for the sample return mission, it is different from the earlier Sendrian 3 uh, that we are going and making a soft landing and then collecting samples and then samples are seen and then part of the vehicle is escaping the gravity of moon and then it comes back and making a re-entry. It's coming from moon, so its velocity is uh, more than an orbital re-entry. Typical orbital re-entry, its velocity is around 8,000 meters per second. Here, it will be of the order of 11,000 meters per second. So the energy to be dissipated is uh, more and the thermal protection system has to be accordingly pruned. Uh, so that then it has to come through the atmosphere, deploy the parachute, make a soft landing. So that uh, demonstrates our end-to-end -end capability to go to moon, soft land, come back. So that is a, pre a cost of precursor technologies will be demonstrated for uh, our future, if in case if you wanted to go and land on moon and then come back. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nair, for... Uh you know, sharing that little bit of uh, where we are headed in our space program. It is so very exciting, Pallav. Wonderful to have you in the studio.